Welcome to the Savvy Radio Show. Today is Nerd Rock Wednesday, dedicated to helping you learn more about technology to increase yourself and your business empire. Yes, yeah, Savvy Investors, today is Nerd Rock Wednesday, kind of my favorite time of the day, noon on a Wednesday. We're talking about getting paid. Show me the money. All right. So if you don't know this by now, the goal of a landlord is to get paid. That's right, to get paid. And you don't want to lose a qualified tenant if you can't take their money. For example, they roll up to a property and they have their money, a deposit or their application, and they really want to hold the deposit. But you don't take cash. Of course, you don't want to take cash at a vacant property. You might be turning around and walk to your car and get bamboozled. But you can take their money electronically. That's right. Let technology do the heavy lifting for you. So for applications, for deposits, your goal is to take the money as easily and fast and no headache approach. All right. So here's some cool places, and you, you apply this not only just for, you know, people reserving a property, but to also to be paying their rent. There's a great little service called paynearme.com. That's right, pay, P-A-Y, near, N-E-A-R-M-E dot com. What it is is that it's a kind of an, a place where they'll accept payments, and that is 7-Eleven and Family Dollar. There is a family dollar in a 7-Eleven near you, and they'll take payments for you. It's easy to set up. It's free. The tenant goes in there, pays the deposit, or pays their rent through Pay Near Me at 7-Eleven or Family Dollar. Boom. They can do it with an app as well. All right. The next website slash app. Well, this is really mainly an app. It's called Venmo, V E N. MO.com. I learned this from David Torres and what it is, it's kind of a, a app that you put on your phone and with a click of a button, you can just send money to whoever you want. This is not logging into PayPal or some fancy stuff. You got to fill out. You just download the app, set up a bank account and boom, the other individual has to have a Venmo account as well. V E N M O.com. And they can receive the money. They can send money back and forth. Pretty sick. You got to check it out. And the new tech, you know, the new generation millennials, they're very comfortable with uh, electronics and they're very comfortable about virtual money per se. And uh, you can send, they can, they don't, they don't have a problem sending money back and forth for Venmo. Okay. V E N M O. Now, if you have a PayPal account, you should, you probably bought something on eBay before, but I don't know if a lot of people don't know this, but you can get a credit card reader. It's free. And you can fill out the form on PayPal.com. They'll set it all up for you. And then a couple of days later, you'll get a card swiper in the mail for free. And you can take credit cards or key them in on your cell phone with the PayPal app. Another one similar to that as well is Square. Everyone's seen the commercial years ago. It's a little square. It's called Square Up. Boom. No upfront fees. No hula hoops. No nothing. We actually take deposits sometimes with Square Up. It's super simple to set up. Download the app. Of course, you got to have the square. You can set up an account. They'll mail you a square. You can actually go to Best Buy or maybe even Walmart and buy a little square device for five bucks. And you can be taking payments, credit card payments, debit card payments within minutes with Square Up. All right, here's another service. If you're familiar with MrLandlord.com, he is a, an affiliate of ClearNow.com. That's C L E A R N O W dot com. I'll send you a link on my website. All these will be on my website, so you can check that out. But um, you set that up, and they kind of handle all that transaction HCH ACH for you. And what that is is an automatic um, withdrawal from their bank account. You gotta check out ClearNow dot com. There's also another company called Cozy C O Z Y. Dot com. I haven't used them, but I Googled it up and I found them. I also found two other websites just recently. And of course, technology is growing by the minute, by the second. And there's constantly new websites to, to transfer money and to gain money and crowdfunding and blah, blah, blah. 
But I found these two websites. I haven't vetted them out, but it's called rentpayment.com, R-E-N-T-P-A-Y-M-E-N-T.com, and also e-rentpayment.com. I'll have these links on the SavvyRadioShow.com website. Now, how I collect and how do I get paid? Well, I use a property management software called Buildium. And that's B-U-I-L-D-I-U-M. And it's, you know, it's a, kind of a setup. It was like a $100 setup fee. And you kind of do all the legal hoop, loo, loo. But you send it up. Now my tenants, they log into their Buildium account. It's a separate portal for tenants. They click on their account. They see that their rent is due or there's a late fee or they're behind or there was a trip charge or something. They click the button. They fill in their information. It stores it in there through a third party, Buildium, and boom, in a couple of days, I am receiving that money. Pretty pretty savvy. I don't have to communicate with the tenant at all. They log into their account. If they have any questions, they can email me through their account. It's pretty sick. I believe Appfolio does the same thing. That's A-P-P-F-O-L-I-O dot com. I know there's some super old school uh, QuickBooks landlords out there. Ain't nothing wrong with that. But the cool thing about QuickBooks is that you can send invoices and your tenants can pay off of QuickBooks as well. It's very inexpensive to set up QuickBooks. I think it's like 25 cents or 50 cents per transaction. Pretty much already set up. But you got to send them an invoice all the time. Here's some quick tips for you uh, in the future about getting money from your tenants or people that owe you. You might want to use ACH payments. It's really not difficult to do that. And ACH means automatic clearinghouse, which it automatically comes right out of their bank account. I definitely recommend doing that, um, setting that up with your tenants as soon as possible. Then you really don't have to think about it. There is no processing. It just sucks it out of their bank account and dumps it into your bank account. Boom. You got to like that. Another thing a lot of uh, investors may or may not know out there is that some banks, and I heard Bank of America used to do this. Well, Bank of America, actually, you can get an ATM card that's a deposit-only ATM card. And that used to be a trick uh, several landlords used to use. I don't know if they still do it, but you can request and hand that actual looks like a credit card it's actually looks like a debit card but it, you can put the address of the house on there and the tenant can go to any bank of america atm machine stick that card in and deposit your rent in there and then boom it's in your bank account another side thing on that as well is that you can create a separate savings account in your banking account now core you don't of course you don't want to give out your banking number to your tenants, that wouldn't be the savvy thing to do. But what you can do is to communicate with your banker and say, hey, I want to have tenants come in here and pay their rent through a deposit slip. Well, what do you mean? Well, that's what I exactly mean. I'm going to give my tenants a deposit slip and they're going to pay their rent that way. And so what some landlords have done before is that they they set it up, how to keep track of that, say their rent is $800, they may say, hey, deposit $799.58, then they can track, you say if you have 100 tenants, you can track that 58 may be related to the 58th tenant, I don't know how you want to organize it, but the cool thing about that is that you set up a savings account, they drop the money in there, and then you can go online and you can log in exactly the day and see when they deposited it. And then you can just transfer it over. It's in- instantaneous. There's no delays. And they can go through drive through Another service that I don't know if these banks are still doing it any longer, but years ago, that you can pay like a monthly fee of 6 to $13 and they can come in and pay their rent to the teller and automatically like basically accept payment. And it goes right into your account. You have to fill out some paperwork. Now, that's kind of an older way to do it, but it may still be existence. Maybe small a small pa- bank t- in your town, small town, a bank in your town, a community bank, which is what I definitely recommend that you should listen to uh, Big Money Mondays. And I cover a lot of banking, a lot of community banking, but... You know, there's a small bank in your in your area that you might have have you need to have a relationship with, and say, hey, I wanted my tenants to pay here. They may not charge you a fee at all. They may want that deposit. And if you understand how banking works, the more deposits that they receive, the more that they can lend out. You know, so you might want to check into that. Also, another way to get your money without thinking about it: post dated checks. I've had tenants where they read out twelve checks for the year. And then we just deposit them on the first. Pretty simple. And, you know, it's another idea. 
And ultimately, I definitely recommend that you do not take cash uh, for many reasons. One, for just horror stories of embezzlement. Another story uh, that I've heard a few times where uh, people have gotten robbed. Uh, Offices have gotten robbed. People have been broken into cars thinking that there is cash there. Don't go there. Create a policy. Here's a policy when we've just switched over to completely cashless. And when someone does show up with rent, we charge them a $15 fine for that. And then they'll remember how to do that later. I know that's kind of excessive, but we do not want to take cash. And another incentive for yourself is say that you want your rent to be 750 bucks a month. That's a property that you have. Well, what you can do in your lease, you state in your lease that the rent is $800. You bump it up 50 bucks. But if you pay your rent by the first, on or before the first, we will take a $50 deduction. The cool thing about that is that some judges in eviction court get a little up in arms called usury tax that we shouldn't be charging late fees. I know, but that's some some judges think that way. But this way, it's actually stated in your lease specifically, even though I understand that it says late fee, but the judge can throw that out, and I've seen him do that. But if it says the rent is $800 and you're offering a discount, it's uh, more likely that you're going to get your full rent uh, without saying the word late fee. Anyway, that is today. So your job as a landlord is to get paid. All right. So think about it. Any creative ways that you can think of of getting your money as fast as possible. Use technology. I believe that's the fastest way as possible. Anyway, my name is Stephen Van Kallenberg. You just dipped on in to the Nerd Rock Wednesday. Get paid. If you want to hear more episodes, go to the Savvy Radio Show dot com. I do appreciate any comments or suggestions, and I would love to get those on the show as well. Have a great day in whatever you do. Use technology to go buy assets. Investor Weekend is not far off with over 10 information sessions to increase your portfolio. Log on to www.investorweekend.com. Whether you are a seasoned investor or never purchased a property before, you don't want to miss the Investor Weekend. Join us for a powerful, knowledge-packed weekend with over 10 informational sessions that are bound to enlarge your real estate investments. You will hear from the best national and local real estate investors that will share practical and relevant experiences with you, the investor. There will be several networking sessions to connect with other like-minded people for potential funding, partnerships, and yes, hot deals. Go to www.investorweekend.com. Did you know we meet once a month for the Landlord Lunch Meeting? The third Wednesday of every month, go to LandlordLunch.com. Thanks for listening to the Savvy Radio Show. Glide online and listen to our other motivating episodes at SavvyRadioShow.com. Connect on Twitter at LandlordBook and always be buying assets. 